Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. This is going to be the first Houdini tutorial I've done. Um, it's just a little quick tip. Um, I will just he head straight right to it. You know you know what we're doing. So uh, We're going to drop down a line for the rope of this rope swing. The idea is to create mass on a... Um, on a on a vellum simulation, uh, it's a problem I want. I had recently. I wanted to figure out. It's pretty simple. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, one, one. Where's the group? Where's the group? I'm trying to. Nope. There we go. Um, just trying to make like a little rope thing here. Uh, resample your line. Just very quickly, um, a few times, add a group, uh, this is just a really really quick example, uh, we're gonna call it pin, select these points, no, select these points, or, or just a few, um, and then we're gonna create vellum, uh, no, vellum, Ring. Not, uh, it's one of these, uh, not vellum hair, I was getting problems with vellum hair. Vellum string, yeah. And then a vellum solver. Uh, oh, what am I doing today? Vellum solver, down here. Uh, we need to pin the points uh, with our group here. And now if we press play, we should have a Vellum simulation. Problem with this is that the Vellum simulation, th there's no weight to it. I want to make it feel like there's something on the end of this, right? With like, whether this is a rope swing or a wrecking ball or something. There's no weight here. So the easiest way to do that, and that's what I'm going to show you, this quick tip, is the attribute wrangle. Um, for, we're going to call it mass. We're going to group the point zero because um, it's just a procedural way of doing it. Zero is going to be at the bottom here, so I'm going to use zero. Uh, you can use any sort of group. You can select it manually or create a group and then prompt it here, whether it's a pin group or something. We're just going to select zero. Uh, and then we're going to type F for float because a float value is zero. Uh, it's, it's in between like 0 and 1, so 0 0.5 or 1.6 or something, rather than it being a solid number. We're going to use float, attribute is mass, equals something like 0 0.01, and then our um, thing at the end here, thing at the end, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, um, this should add some sort of mass, and it does, but uh, if, well, I, I find is if I increase it too much, the whole thing starts getting carried away and gets really bouncy, so a way to fix that, just turn up your subsets, um, I'm going to turn mine up to 2, and it should help drastically with the bouncing, and it also means we can increase this, give it more weight on the end of this. Uh, rope. Nice. Still a lot of bouncing here, so just to increase subdivisions. Basically, what the subdivisions are is the subdivisions are the frames between frames. Okay, so um, if you increase the number of frames between frames that it, the simulation calculates, uh, it's going to be a more accurate simulation, but it's also going to give it more time to calculate more forces. So that's why you don't get as much bounce and it's it's figuring things out. Uh, it's figuring more information, um, which helps. So we're going to blast this. This is just so I can give you a better visual representation of, of the difference. Uh, we're going to select our zero point. We're going to get a sphere, uh, an attribute delete. Because there's a P scale attribute here actually. Uh, we're just going to get rid of that. That'll give us problems. Um, 
we're gonna get our points, uh, copy the points, sorry. Copy to points. A little um, tip I learned when you're searching for things. Um, you don't need to type out the whole node, you can, if you've, it's got multiple words. For example, I copied the point, you can write C O P for copy the points, and you'll find it. Uh, just the first letters of each one. Uh, this is the wrong way around, so I can use Shift R to flip it back. Now we're going to merge the um, sphere to the line. Like this, we can shrink down this sphere because it's really big. Um, this is just a quick example. Um, so now if, if we press play here. Right, it seems like there's something on the end of that. There's a bit of weight. The difference without it is this. There is no weight there whatsoever. It's bending. This might be handy if you want like uh, a paper ball or something on the end of your, your string. But it does no weight there whatsoever. Adding some mass to the end of it makes a huge difference. There's a lot more weight there, a lot more uh, going on, so I think that helps a lot. So hopefully, um, I hope you've enjoyed this, it was a little quick video, quick tip. Um, it's my first tutorial, if there's a better way of doing this let me know, um, I would appreciate that. So yeah, I hope it's helped someone, thanks and uh, see, you. see you next time.